most times to be sure. It was captured on June 4, 1944 by a native Chicagoan and U.S. Naval Captain Dan Dowling and the American Hunter Killer Task Group 22.3. Their primary goal was to destroy German U-boats. Now folks, before we enter the U-505 today, there are a few things that I want you all to keep in mind. First, if you're five foot five or taller, please watch your hats as we enter and travel through specific parts of the boat. Also, please feel free to take photographs. Typically, we do not allow videography on this particular tour, but it is okay in this particular circumstance, okay? Thank you. Also, there will be lights and sound effects throughout the entire tour, so please stay with me. Lastly, there will be additional time at the very end of the tour for any questions or comments that you may have. Is that fair? Yes. Wonderful. So imagine, if you will, that you're preparing for a 90-day journey on board the U505. What are the two most important things you think you need to take on board for survival? Just shout them out. Food and? Water. Water. Oh, nicely done. This is going to be a good group. Yes. Now, there was a limited amount of space on the U505. So the crew had to store food wherever they could find room for it. Store canned breads and beans underneath their bunks. They would hang sausages and fresh fruit baskets on the pipes above their heads. And in fact, one of the two bathrooms on board the U505 was completely packed with food. This meant that for more than half of the time that the crew was at sea, 59 men shared not two bathrooms, they shared one bathroom. They literally had to eat their way through that second bathroom. You mentioned water. There was a limited supply of fresh water. Now, this meant that the crew could only use water for three important reasons cooking, drinking, and maintaining the batteries which powered the boat's electrical supply. Now, some of you may have noticed I haven't said anything at all about hygiene. That's because for the 90 days of the crew was at sea, they couldn't shave, they couldn't brush their teeth, they couldn't bathe. Instead, they swabbed with alcohol. Oh, oh. On top of that, they had one uniform for the entire 90 day tour. Now, if that was not enough, heat. Another condition that made life on board the U505 very difficult. Temperatures could reach up to 110 degrees in specific parts of the boat. Well, now that we've set the scene, let's enter the U505 and see what a typical day was like, shall we? Quarters. Now, this is where the petty officers or the middle ranking men slept and spent their spare time. Now, this side of the U505 appears pretty much the way that it did, but it was captured in 1944. However, for your safety and convenience, we've made a few modifications. Now, the first thing that we did is we created this entrance that you all just walked through. Now, the U505 was an operation. The main point of entry and exit would have been through a hatch on the top of the boat. Also, we've lowered the floor and we've removed all of the bunks that occupied this side of the U505. Now, you can see that the petty officers have their own bunks and they also have a little bit of privacy. However, this was not the case for the lower ranked enlisted men. I want you all to direct your attention to that round open hatch right behind you. Now, that's the forward torpedo room back there. Now, you can see that there are some additional bunks. Because of the limited amount of space on the U505, this compartment doubled as sleeping quarters for the enlisted men. Although the U505 had a crew of 59 men, there were only 35 beds. This meant that the crew had to do something called hot bunking. Hot bunking meant two men shared one bunk. So when one man got out of the bunk to go to work, another man would get into that bunk to go to sleep. Now, when the crew was not working on the U505, they could read or play cards and listen to music, which is one of the few luxuries that the crew had. But you're now hearing is one of 87 records that was retrieved from the U505 when it was captured in 1944. Now, this is French dance hall music. Now, French dance hall music was banned in mainland Germany. It was allowed on board the U505. Let's just take a moment to listen.
Now there could be long, long periods of inactivity on board the UF level 5. But when a merchant supply ship was spotted, the crew of the UF level 5 would spring into action. Now when a man patrolling the deck of the UF level 5 spotted a merchant supply ship on the horizon, a captain would ring the submarine's dive bell. <laughs> Dive bell would send them in rushing to their dive stations where they would open the valves and send water flooding the ballast tanks. This would make the submarine more denser than the water surrounding it and force it to submerge beneath the surface. Next, the captain and the men in the torpedo room would begin working on the firing solution, which were calculations to aid the torpedo. Let's listen. each and every day using three small hot plates and an oven just a little bit larger than the size of a men's shoe box. As you pass through the galley, I want you to imagine your own kitchen and what that may have been like. Next, you'll pass through the general officer's quarters, which is where the highest ranking men slept, followed by the sound and radio rooms on your left, where the Enigma machine was kept, and the captain's quarters on your right. Let's stick together. Please watch your heads. I'll meet you all in the control room. Now, in order to crash dive, 
meant that all the men on duty would literally run to the front of the boat, they would physically pile on top of each other, and force the submarine to submerge beneath the surface faster. No. resurface every 36 hours or so to replenish the boat with fresh air and to also recharge their batteries. Now that pinging that you hear, that was active sonar from Captain Gallery and the American Hydrocalo Task Group trying to detect the UFEBO-5's exact location. Now the crew also knew that when those pinging sounds got louder and closer together, it was a sign that the enemy was near. They knew that Captain Gallery was closing in on them. sitting in this space, hearing those pinging sounds getting louder and closer together. Yeah, to say the least. Captain Langham did the only thing that he could do, and that was to dive deeper into the Atlantic to avoid capture. Now at this level, the very last thing that Captain Langham and his crew want to hear are splashes in the water. These are depth charges. Now, depth charges were underwater explosives specifically designed to destroy German U-boats. When Captain Langa and his crew heard those flashes in the water, the only thing that they could do would be to brace themselves for the impact of the explosions. Surrounded by Captain Gallery, the American Hunter Killer Task Group 243. They met by six 